Also, because I, I, I don't unblock your calls, that somehow I'm involved. What does that even mean? Do you f up, let her go missing or something? Don't somehow you, you find a this? way to I'm sick of this. Don't you sick ever get of sick of this? This. No, none of this. A cable executive once told me that his strategy in this era of peak TV was to seal up talent in long-term mutually advantageous deals because that's the best way to remain competitive and achieve traction in today's seller's market. It makes sense in many ways, but it also does run the risk of ending up with something that's like a been there, done that at the cost of innovation and something genuinely interesting. Now that's the dilemma that both Amazon and Epix find themselves in with the David E. Kelly stayed legal drama Goliath led by Billy Bob Thornton and the morose presidential comedy Graves fronted by Nick Nolte with the former launching its eight episode first season on October 14th and the latter first original comedy by Epix debuting on October 16th, right after the new drama Berlin Station. Getting the latest from the creator of Boston Legal and Ally McBeal, to name but a few Kelly created and produced projects on board must have looked like a gold star move on paper for the House of Bezos. But the Jonathan Shapiro co-created straight to series result is really a pretty standard courtroom drama that easily could have ended up on network TV back in the 1990s. Watching Oscar winner Thornton try to squeeze new juice out of the battle his down and out and boozed up lawyer Billy McBride faces against the firm he co-founded and his now vengeance obsessed power broker boss played by a scarred William Hurt is a Herculean effort in many ways, but still results in just a few drops of something fresh. Oh, I'm being followed. You need to be careful. He would love nothing more than to destroy you. Now, no spoilers here as to where Goliath ends up, but the real spotlight should shine on Maria Bello as McBride's still reluctantly friendly ex-wife and mega firm Cooperman McBride high flyer and Molly Parker as the firm's shiv that hunts Cooperman sends into courtroom battle to cut Thornton's McBride down once and for all. It is with these complex and conflicted female characters that Kelly, like he did so well on Harry's Law with Kathy Bates, most recently before NBC canned it in 2011, crafts story and motion worth paying attention to as the boys huff, puff, and fight each other. This is so exciting. You poor thing. As with Goliath, it is the female character and actor in Celia Ward in Graves that is worth watching. Though in the case of the Joshua Michael Stern created biteless satire, it is pretty hard to wade through almost everything else to get to the strong turns of Ward as former First Lady Margaret Graves. As the one Graves with a potential political future, Ward, who played the president actually in this summer's Independence Day resurgence and replaced Susan Sarandon in Graves, is truly the only reason to watch this tale of an unpopular ex-GOP POTUS who long out of office has discovered where everything went wrong and decides to take on the establishment, well, I kind of want to don't know what to say there because it's kind of hard to figure out amidst the half-baked gags, Graves getting baked with a local waitress, the cameos by the likes of Rudy Giuliani, and the reduction of multiple Oscar nominee Nolte to just stomping around and growling where he could be chewing on material, if there was any material to truly be chewing on, which unfortunately in Graves, there isn't. The last great Republican president, Richard Graves. As it has with Berlin Station, Epix has put the first couple of episodes of Graves online, so you can see what I'm talking about right now if you want, and how the wrong Graves is fronting this misfire. As for Goliath, less an epic of biblical implications, and more a lot of old school influences from David E. Kelly's well-tested talents. If your expectations of something newer dropped, it's actually well worth checking out, mainly for Bello and House of Cards alum Parker, who really need a spin-off of their own, worthy of their own long-term talents. I'm Dominic Patton for Deadline Hollywood.